Hello. Testing. 42, Walby Way, Sydney. Hello. Hello, testing. Hello. Okay. Hey guys, welcome to the long awaited channel. Today, we're gonna to be talking a little bit about how I got here. People have been asking me quite a bit, generally how I ended up in my position. So long story short, where I am right now, I am currently about to finish my master's at the University of Calgary, so that's exciting. Now it's time to kind of like reel it, reel it back and, and some of the decisions that I made on the uh, along the way and um, where I'm headed. I, I started out, if we're going to go all the way back, we got to go all the way back. I wanted to be a pilot. Like I wanted to fly planes. And then one time in grade eight, my vice principal came up to me and he kind of asked my group of friends. He's like, hey, like, what do you guys want to do uh, when you guys grow up? And I was like, I want to be a pilot. And he's like, aren't you scared? Like planes can like fall out of the sky and, you know, crashes are a thing. And that completely turned me off of it. So I was like, yep, nope. Bruh. Yeah, eventually, you know, I, I got into the uh, the bands of Calgary, which are a group of, of marching bands. And uh, yeah, I started with the Rounded Band, which is the junior high group. Um, and it honestly just completely changed my, my whole musical experience. Um, I had been doing band since grade seven, and I started piano, I think it was in grade six or five. Um, so I've been doing like music related stuff for quite a while. But yeah, I joined the Rounded Band, and then that kind of like took took off because uh, the following year I then joined the Stetson show band because uh, that's now the high school group. And then a year after I auditioned for the Calgary Stampede show band, then like I, you know, spent four years there. So being in the, in the bands of Calgary took six years of my life. And I want to say that it was probably one of the best six years of my life, just with all of the experiences that I was able to have in BOC. Um, and also, you know, traveling the world is pretty great. So um, I owe a lot of my my musical success definitely to not not just like the instructors, but also also my my group of friends and all that stuff. Moving into university, um, I auditioned for BMU's um, back in back in 2015, and uh, yeah, got in. And um, yeah, originally I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, uh, but I ended up choosing performance towards the end of my first year. And really, it's not that much different from a regular degree. Really, you're just performing more and you take less classes. So that seemed a little bit attractive to me. So I was like, all right, let's do it. Fast forwarding throughout my degree, I didn't really do anything extra to say, oh, I did this, I did that. No, I was just like, you know, I just kind of like went through my degree like a lot of people do. I was fortunate enough to be able to perform at National Music Center, uh, which was really, really a nice opportunity and it was my first time going there. So it's a really nice space. So if you haven't had the chance to definitely go check out uh, Studio Bell. Yeah, outside of performing there, you know, I had my two recitals and all that kind of good stuff. So moving away from like what I went through through my university degree. So originally, like I always had this idea in my mind that I was like, you know what? I'm going to be a music teacher. Like I want to be in a high school or whatever, being a band teacher. Like that was always like, that's what I want to do. I started teaching private lessons in 2017, I think. Uh, so it's been a couple of years since I've been doing like one-on-one -on -one lessons with students. And one of the biggest things that I noticed was like, I really like this interaction that I'm having with, with these, with these students. And they're not just kids. Like sometimes they'll have, uh, you know, older, older people. So it was a, it was a large variety of people that I was, that were coming to, to me to have private lessons. And, um, it was just, uh, I almost felt like my, I, my mentality changed in the sense that like, I don't really feel, I don't know if I would necessarily like teaching a band class and that really started to shift towards the end of my of my undergrad because I didn't know what I was going to do afterwards I always had this idea that like yeah I'm going to you know go into education but I was in a place towards the end of my undergrad where I was like you know what I'm actually like I'm playing really good right now like my my sax abilities are at a point where I'm just like if I go into education I'm gonna be like almost like stopping myself almost like hindering my progress because with education, like a lot of people have told me, you know what, don't go into education 
and then do your masters because like you'll have that two year gap where just like you, like you won't have time to touch your instrument. So that was one of the biggest things um, that was like stopping me. So because uh, some people were saying, you know what, do your masters and do your education degree because you know what, it's a higher pay grade. Um, so anyways, I ended up applying to both. And luckily I did get into both. I did get into education and my, and to do my music masters here at UFC as well. And I chose to do my masters because I was like, you know what, I'm, I want to keep going with this and I don't necessarily want to end up teaching like I mentioned, but I was just like, you know what, that's kind of like my plan B. So that's like, that's kind of like set that, set that aside in my masters my mentality started to shift a lot. So in the first year of your master's, you have to take this class where it's like you have to, you learn how to do research basically, which once you get into like your master's level and your PhD level, you have to do a lot of research, like a lot of like academic type of research. My research topic was going to be something on musicians' health. So that's something that was really prevalent, I guess, throughout my undergrad, just in the sense that I have a weak soft palate uh, whatever that may mean to you. Basically what it means is like, once I get tired enough, like my face starts to give out and like, it just, it's just, it's hard to blow into my saxophone. And I've experienced that like a lot of times when I'm like practicing, but mainly when I'm like, when I'm feeling super overwhelmed and like super stressed. And then like, I have to do a recital every single one of my recitals it's happened like towards the end of my recital. Like it may not sound like it cause I'm good at hiding it, but towards the end of my recital i'm just like haha i can't play because i'm tired so yeah that's that's something that i deal with and you know i'm i've had to kind of like take it upon myself to learn what it first of all what it is how to not treat it but how to deal with it and i kind of had to go through outside sources just because i couldn't really find any answers like here in calgary so you know i contacted a lot of professors um and a lot of health practitioners uh in the u.s and in australia little did i know that australia is a hub for like musicians health and wellness so anyways i was doing a proposal for a grant and this grant would allow me to conduct this research essentially um i didn't get the grant but i kind of was left like wondering and i was like i need to i want to keep going with this so i sought out a professor so she's at the university of of alberta and she has a background in like health sciences occupational therapy and she's a noble player and she gives like classes on like musicians health and stuff or at least she did at the university of alberta because now she's at the university of ottawa but initially i was just like oh like you know what it would be nice to keep going with this and i'd like to like apply at u of a and like start studying over there like and have you like as my supervisor kind of thing uh but like i said she she ended up moving to um the university of ottawa so um, as of right now, I'm kind of like following her and, uh, yeah, I applied at the university of Ottawa to get a PhD in, um, PhD in music, but it's like an interdisciplinary program. So like my plan would be to do music and for the moment, kinesiology, I, I don't know yet, but that's just kind of like what I've, what I've applied into. Um, so I can do some more like health and wellness stuff, but yeah, so basically like what I've been doing is I've been conducting research, uh, with her with, as part of this, uh, um, network this canadian network that essentially like aims to share health and wellness resources for musicians throughout canada throughout like post-secondary institutions which is like really really cool and it's fairly new because it's kind of a new topic and it's kind of like the hot topic right now so i'm not going into it because i'm just like oh you know what that would be super cool it's like i've had experiences in it and not a lot of people are talking about it and um Yeah. So that's kind of like the direction that I'm going in. And as you can tell, it is very different from being in a band room teaching kids. Um, Now, it's not to say that being a band teacher is bad. That's not what I'm saying. It's more so saying that I realized that that wasn't for me. And I think that's one of the biggest things is like I had a lot of shifts throughout both degrees that like put me where I am today. I had those kind of like, I I said a while back that like during my master's, I learned more about myself than I did about music or anything else. So I think that university is a weird time because, you know, a lot of people end up doing switches like this where they try to, or they kind of like lose sight of like what they actually want to do because, you know, they go into studying something and they're like, you know what? I don't really like this. So yeah, I hope that me saying that kind of shows that like if you're going through something that's like 
you know what, I'm, <laughs> I'm doing this degree, but I don't know if I like it or like, I don't know what I'm going to do afterwards. Like I was in that spot too. I was just lucky enough to, to be able to meet certain people and make these connections that I've been able to kind of like take the steps that I've been able to take. And, um, I'm like super thankful that I'm heading in the direction that I'm going in. So yeah, it's, it's definitely not an easy thing to just kind of like do in one go. And, you know, if you did it all in one go, sweet, like props to you, like here's a high five, but you know, that, that just like, wasn't my path, I guess. And so, like I said, super thankful for, for each of the little things that have kind of influenced the path. Like if you think of it, like a, um, if you think of it as like a field, and like each little thing is kind of like carving out a path until you finally have something like in front of you that you're just like, okay, this is like where I want to go. But yeah, that's kind of everything. And um, like I said, it hasn't been a straight route, right? It's kind of been like bendy until I'm just like, okay, like this, this, this seems pretty cool. So um, yeah, that's been it. And uh, if you have any questions or anything, feel free to leave them down in the comments and I'll try to get to all of them. But uh, yeah, see you in the next one. Peace.